Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Super excited to be back. I hope you enjoyed your week off last week, had a chance to go back and digest some of the things we've been talking about and, and maybe get caught up on other things. Uh, so last week, uh, the week prior, we actually took a look at the process improvement organization, right? So this is level three of our certification program. Here we're focused at this stage on what the design elements are for establishing a process improvement organization for your team and really putting something in place that's very powerful and sustainable component of your structure and your operations. You know, we, we talk about continuous improvement. We talk about business process management. We talk about how we want to create processes, document them, how much nicer it would be. And yet often those types of discussions and those initiatives, they fall flat, right? And so why, why we're focused on the PIO in this segment is that it is an important structural element for us to place into our organization. You know, if we put, put the right resources in play or charter the right people with these roles to help us help us spearhead and keep the momentum going, right? Get people engaged, have the communication. Just like any other program, it's important to have that kind of ownership, that kind of overview, right? Now, in addition to that, it's also important that we have the mechanisms in place. We have clear definitions around things like roles and responsibilities, that we've got the tool sets in place to help us really be able to monitor and manage and bring to bear what's needed. If we need training, we bring that to bear. If we need communication, we bring it to bear. Uh, change takes place over time. And often for organizations that are focused around truly transforming, you know, a truly transformative experience, uh, this can be a two to three year journey before you reach the tipping point where the aspects of business process management and the culture of continuous improvement really takes root and then it becomes much more self-sustaining. It becomes a matter of practice, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at what our day is today and where we're going to be focused. Uh, so today, our session focuses around roles and responsibilities and department controls. So we're just going to do a little deep dive right here and focus in around what are those roles and those responsibilities, right? What should I be hiring for? What should I be recruiting for? Uh, you know, even job descriptions. I, I won't, I'm not going to go through the through job descriptions today, but I'm, give, I'm, I'm going to give you some highlights of the key roles that are necessary for success in this space and the key capabilities. And and with that, obviously, you know, if you if you are interested in some job descriptions, I'm happy to provide those after the session as well. Uh, you can just reach out directly to me, and and I'll share that with you, of course. But today, we're going to zero in on these roles and responsibilities and controls. And so this is based on the, the principle that there needs to be a strong foundation in place and that that foundation includes clarity, crystal clarity on the responsibilities, the authority, and the controls that help us govern our process improvement environment. Okay, so this is where we're, we're going to be drilling and getting that crystal clear, all right? And then also, uh, we'll talk a little bit about some of the departmental controls or the mechanisms, effectively how these roles help us to govern what our work is and help to keep us focused over the long haul, and, and then how these roles uh, and, and uh, these responsibilities actually help lead the way for process improvement. Okay, so this is, these are in effect, uh, these are leaders in your organization, if you will, not necessarily hierarchically or on your organization chart, as we might think of authoritative leadership, but these are absolutely thought leaders and, and people who are passionate in this space. And so I want to dive into these. Now, uh, from that perspective, so for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, just uh, to get you familiar with how our SNAP webinars work, we call them SNAP because we aim for them to be between 20 and 30 minutes in length. 
give you some good little meaty things to take away and work with. And then we come back around once a week to have another piece added into our conversation. So the way that it will flow, I've uh, given you a quick little overview so you have a sense of where we're headed today. Uh, I'm going to zero in around you know, the, the, the uh, transition, if you will, or, or over time, how things have evolved in the space of process improvement and the roles and responsibilities in the process improvement space. And then we'll go into some cultural elements. We'll talk a bit about from a BPM and culture improvement, continuous improvement best practice perspective. This is where I'm gonna do a deep dive into some of the key roles for your PIO and, and then what, the, what some of the core responsibilities are. So I'm gonna give you a nice little flavor for that. Okay, and some of the job titling you might see here as well. And, um, and then we'll have an opportunity for an open forum. If there are any questions, uh, I'll be able to turn off the, or unmute the mics, I believe. We're gonna give it a shot and see if we just have any questions that you wanna pop out there. Of course, of course, any questions that you've got as well, and you can just drop them into the chat section along the way also, and I'll, I'll make sure that those get answered as well. Okay, so, um, so that's where we're gonna go. And uh, let's jump right in. All right, so our conversation is around the evolution of process improvement roles and responsibilities and the influence uh, and, and um, responsibility that, that these roles have as it relates to providing governance for your process improvement initiative. Uh, that process improvement initiative may exist inside of a larger conversation that's going in, on for you around transition uh, or transformation of your organization. It may be in the space of absolutely a cultural conversation. How do we create, for example, more engagement? How do we get people more actively involved in providing feedback? How do we create accountability and ownership that people take ownership of the processes that they're responsible for, that they actually work with every day? Um, how do we make this fun? Um, so, so this is, you know, this is the context that we're operating in. So let's take a, let's take a quick look at how the process improvement roles have evolved over time. And we're going to do that against a familiar landscape. Uh, so we will do that against our transitioning uh, from a much more classic uh, Visio map processes period, you're done kind of conversation, um, all the way up through an environment where we have process standardization and evolution and a high degree of engagement in our organization. So let's just start with this first one. So you know, when, when people uh, were designated as being responsible for leading a process improvement initiative for the company, or perhaps it was their sole role, or it might have been something added to their responsibilities, uh, back in the day, all right, back in the day, this, this would typically take the appearance of being a very centralized function. One person, for example, or a small core team, for example, uh, was designated, you're responsible for this. And back in that day, uh, the conversations were very centralized and they were also very tactical. So it, it took on a shape of let's draw a Visio map or let's map out on the whiteboard or with sticky notes, let's just map out what our process is. And, and then falling out of that, there may have been some conversation of process improvements or opportunities. Um, so you get the sense, not a lot of methodology. Uh, also, uh, very, uh, I would call it point in time, if you will. Okay, so very point in time for that perspective. And certainly not a, um, a forward-looking, managed um, approach. Okay, so, so this is where we started. Then as we continue to evolve and the conversations move more into business transformation, uh, from a business transformation standpoint, I'm thinking, you know, you can think of this on a calendar timeline, right? So from a business transformation standpoint, um, what starts to emerge here is that it, it is all, it, it still is centralized. Uh, the, and, and quite often at this point in time, calendaring, if we just think about uh, this is, you know, the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, mid 2000s, um, all the way up until, quite honestly, probably the the you know 2010 2011 timeframe. So so still maybe even a little later than that. Still quite quite recent for us. Um, that that things were still managed in a very centralized way and resourced in a very centralized way. So a handful of people perhaps 
we're trained in the methodologies, we're trained in the tool sets. And from that standpoint, what they often took on was what I call descriptive capture of the work and descriptive capture of the processes. In other words, if I'm sitting and I'm watching somebody do a job and I'm responsible for mapping that out, I am in effect describing what are the things that they are doing. Okay, so, so it's very descriptive. Now, the nuance in that is that when I describe something, the person who is sitting reading what I've created, all that they're able to do is imagine someone else doing that work. Okay, it's, I'm describing it, they're reading it. It's like reading a story. I'm describing it, they're reading it, they envision what would it be if somebody were doing this work. Okay, now, what I want to do is I want to start to lay that out there because we're going to take a look at what our current state is in a moment. You'll see a very important flip in the, in the mindset here. So moving from business transformation, we moved on to empowering a lean culture. Now, this is when things really started to get interesting, I think, from my perspective. And I kind of geek out on this, as you know. So from here, empowering a lean culture in this context, there's space we started to take on more of what I call a hub and spoke approach. In other words, having a core team that both could execute to the directives as well as could educate and, 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 and in, enroll others in actually being able to capture and, and create processes uh, to be able to understand them, to be able to analyze them, to be able to identify where those opportunities are. So there's so some really good juicy thought processes coming out of this space and much more of a organization, a, a structure, much more of a empowering structure, uh, enabling others to be successful in this space and really being able to um, enlist and by enlisting, what we start to see emerging here is that we have better enrollment and better engagement, okay? So we start to get engagement, we start to get accountability, we start to get ownership in this space. Now, I will tell you, being straight here, that not many organizations have even hit this phase. Many organizations, the majority, and if you think about your own organization, this may or may not be true. The majority of organizations, though, are still back in the business transformation conversation, centralized, descriptive, okay? They haven't yet embraced the power of enabling others. Remember, many hands make light the work. I'll share that cliche with you. So many hands make light the work means that we can come together, collaborative. Uh, also, from this standpoint, we also start to talk about people own what they help to create. Okay, so empowering a lean culture, we start to get some of that really good juicy stuff. Now we're seeing more and more companies move in this direction. I'm super excited about the companies that we're getting to work with and personally the ones I'm getting to work with as well that, that are really embracing this, this idea of empowerment. Now, notice this is still descriptive though. So this is still fitting in the space of watching someone do the work and mapping it out, okay? So therefore describing what is being done, okay? Now, watch what happens. And when your organization gets here to this next level, you will know it. You will know it and you will be energized by it, okay? We get into this next space around this idea of we've got an empowered lean culture and we want to standardize around things. I mean, not only do we want to do it well, we want to collaborate well, but we want to all be in on how do we find ways to keep fine tuning and, and, and getting smarter and, and being able to really, really, you know, just get stuff dialed in and adapt and move quickly because we can be responsive to what clients are asking for. So from this standpoint, we move into this fourth phase and we call it process standardization. The underpinnings of all of this are around collaboration and engagement and empowerment. Okay. Now to get there, this is where we go to the next level. This is where we leverage 
a hub and spoke approach. So we want people involved. We want to educate them and train them and have, give them the tools to be able to do these things and mapping our processes and spotting opportunities and methodically and thoughtfully introducing change so that we're really managing ourselves well together. And we've got it dialed in. You think about the high performance sailing teams, for example. Everyone has a very precise role and a responsibility. They know the big picture. They know what their role is and how they fit into it. Okay. And they're focused on how can I do my role better, 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 better each time. Better, 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 better. Okay. So that's what we're going after in this environment of process standardization. To get there, we've got to adopt a hub and spoke approach. And we also need to shift our language in the way that we capture how work is being done and how we educate others on how to do that work. And that's the nuance of informative. So informative is as if you are teaching me how to do your work. You're informing me how to do your work. We capture that. And when we share that information, we share that process map, we share that procedure document, we share that with another person, what's happening? That content is informing them how to do the work. That's what we want. That's the magic right there. Okay? So this is the evolution. So in this context, the, the role and the responsibility of our PIs, our process improvement organization, or even if it's, again, somebody chartered in your organization on your team to champion this, championing, championing, yeah, champion this, <laughs> someone who's really chartered with that, this is what you're going after, okay? This is the, that, that end state, all right? So let's take a look. Let's dive in. So let's talk about culturally what the primary role is of the PIO, okay? It is to guide human performance in, in that aspect of the organization. That is the primary role of whoever it is that is chartered and associated with, the individuals chartered and associated with your process improvement, okay? So we always need to keep this in mind. So what does that look like? Obviously, there are inputs that come in. We've got our whole team of people. We've got, you know, if it's our sailing team, for example, or we've got our construction team there, we've got everybody, they know clearly what their roles are, all right? So that helps to ensure that we get a consistent output, boom, every single time, consistently, we get that output, all right? And now, based on that, we're able to see what are the results. What are the results that we've achieved? And are we achieving the results that we're looking for? And we keep fine-tuning it, we keep fine-tuning it, and people engaged in that fine-tuning. That's powerful. That gets me excited. That really is what we're going after, all right? So this is what we're helping to build with our clients, helping them create this whole ecosystem, this whole environment here, okay? And so from that standpoint, now I want to drive into what are some of the key roles to make this happen, all right? So from a key roles perspective, and this is my happy spring image here, all right? I love the ladybug here. <laughs> so, so this is an ecosystem. It's symbiotic, all right? So from this standpoint, what we're going after is that we want to make sure we have clearly defined and well understood roles and responsibilities. Now, why do we want that? You know, and, and as you just think about it, obviously we want it because people will, you know, I know what I need to do and I know what they're doing. We're not going to duplicate efforts and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We get all that. What I want you to walk away with is to recognize by having clarity, and by having people understand roles and responsibilities, it builds consistency. It builds a, con a consistent foundation for what needs to happen when it needs to happen. In addition to that, it results in what we call an economy of repetition. With that economy of repetition, we end up with a sense of predictability and assurance. And that is one of the most important things for every stakeholder in the organization, the predictability and the assurance. Whether it's your shareholders, your board of directors, your employees, 
your clients, your customers, those people that are buying and utilizing your products, your services. What we're aiming for is that consistent consistency and that sense of predictability and assurance. That's why we want clarity around roles and responsibilities. So from that standpoint, your PIO contains the following roles. There are three primary roles you wanna make sure you've got covered. These may in fact be all one person. If you're a smaller organization, if you're a larger organization, this may be a much larger group or collection of individuals. But these are the three roles that must exist. The improvement coordinator, the process improvement manager, and the process improvement architect. So let's take a quick dive into this and see how these roles blend together, okay? How the three of them pulled together, build and create that architecture, that framework. This is what will lead to your sustainable and transformative shift for your organization and creating continuous improvement environment. So all of these roles are equally important and they are symbiotic in nature, as I mentioned, and all three of them are absolutely required. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the three of them, okay? All right, so our first one, we're gonna start with our process improvement coordinator role. Okay, so our process coordinator, these are some of the definite, some of the titles that you might see. Okay, it comes under a variety of different things, but just want to get that out there. Uh, it might be process coordinator, analysis coordinator, engineering coordinator, process engineering coordinator. So you're going to see a mix of different things. Most importantly, um, let me share with you what they are responsible for and a little bit of characteristics of each of these. So overall, their aim is to support the process improvement effort, overarching. Okay, so they are much more of a support role, and also at times they may be pulled in and may be asked to facilitate smaller process improvement initiatives and change requests. So they absolutely are trained and educated from the standpoint of being able to run small scale process improvement initiatives themselves and execute on that work as well. They provide this overarching coordination, okay, and, 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 the, and the support of the, of the overarching initiative. Now, they also, they help very much in building and maintaining your process library, the documentation repository. So they make sure that um, they're looking out for it to ensure that the tools and templates, the way present power, um, excuse me, the way that materials are presented, the way that processes are, how they are, how they're utilized, that everything is standard and, and utilized consistently, okay? And then they're also responsible for and managing the database, if you will. Uh, so from the standpoint of permissions into the tool set, uh, making sure that communication process changes get communicated to everyone who needs to know uh, and nobody else. Um, so also um, making sure that, you know, there are, this, again, the standard templates and the, and the methodologies, that those are in place and helping to communicate those, to make sure that those get out, okay? Um, from this standpoint, think about who these people are, right? They're absolutely confident. They're positive dynamic. They, they, they tend to be able to work across the entire organization. They're very well respected from that standpoint. Is people know who they are, right? And they're in a strong support role, really strong support role, okay? Phenomenal attention to detail. So from a ProMap standpoint, you know that we often link ourselves for our ProMap clients, we often link ourselves to our ProMap environment. So from a ProMap standpoint, this is in effect, this is your ProMaster. Your ProMaster is somebody who understands all of the aspects of process improvement. They know how to utilize the tool. The tool does all the heavy lifting, right? The tool generates consistent uh, peering maps. It, it does the communication to the people it needs to do it to. So it automates a lot of the things that the coordinator might otherwise be responsible for doing manually, right? So that is uh, the role of our ProMaster, okay? Now, the next role is the role of the Process Improvement Manager. So the Process Improvement Manager, you'll, you'll often see this show up under titles as follows. So process engineer, workflow engineer, process analyst, business analyst is a very common one here as well, okay? So what do these people do? So in this role, 
somebody's responsible, the person's responsible for kind of developing the organization capability. Notice they are responsible for teaching process improvement skills and managing process improvement projects. You want somebody who, who strongly believes in the nature of enabling others to be successful, teaching people to fish, to use that cliche. They, they share their experience. Vividly, they share their experience, okay? So they are passionate about others' success, all right? So this is what we're looking for here. They operate cross-functionally, and that helps, obviously, in enhancing performance and the effectiveness, okay? Notice that they're also accountable for managing all phases of improvement efforts. So this is very much also like a project manager, only, of course, it's a program. It's an initiative. It's a transformation initiative okay so from that standpoint they are very much responsible for managing all phases of the improvement efforts and they're going to have a relatively high level of exposure in the organization so from this standpoint they ensure that that the improvement effort is managed that there's discipline and consistency around it remember back we were talking about the importance of that Okay. So there's discipline, there's a structured fashion, a methodology, there's a cadence, it's just boom, 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 boom. Once a month we get together, we review our processes, how are we doing, how are we tracking, what are we working on next, what are we learning, what can we adapt, that's what they're doing. Okay. So they're really managing this in a disciplined and structured fashion and ensuring alignment at all times with the organization's objectives, the strategic objectives of the business. Okay, so for this individual, this role, what you're looking for is that somebody who has a very strong business process awareness and recognizing that they are effectively responsible for establishing and sustaining your culture of continuous improvement. This is a heartbeat position, a heartbeat role, if you will. Okay, so for our ProMap clients, this is your process champion. This is what your process champions do more often than not, okay? And these are the ones who are out there, I like to call it as carrying the flag. They're doing it, though, in a very disciplined and structured fashion. It's not about rah-rah. It's about having a lot of passion, lightheartedness, and fun, and structure, being really straight about it, and making things happen, all right? So that's that role. The third and final role is the role of the process improvement architect. So this is, these are the kinds of titles that you would typically see with a process improvement architect, okay? And from here, they are ultimately responsible for infusing expertise in the design, efficiency, process monitoring, infusing that expertise into the organization. They architect. They design what the organization's processes, the whole library, the structure, all of it. They don't document necessarily, but they design the structure. They design, are we going to go for end-to-end, -end, for example, order to cash? Or are we going to focus in on functional areas like human resources? So from that standpoint, they are architecting and designing. Ultimately, this is the key. They're responsible for building the organization ecosystem model. That's their responsibility. This is the kind of person that you're looking for here. Someone who's got deep business knowledge. They've got broad technical knowledge. And they've got large-scale cross-functional expertise, process expertise. Ultimately, you need somebody here who has industry knowledge, ideally has industry knowledge. If they're close fit, that's fine. However, you absolutely must have someone in this role who is a change management expert. That's what it takes to sustain. So this is, in ProMap, what we call our lead champion. Okay. All right. So... Those are the three roles. So I wanted to kind of take us through today and kind of lay that foundation, the roles and the responsibilities, give, it, give us a little starting point around kind of that foundation for governance. We're going to do a deep dive on governance next week. Really important and fun aspect of building your PIO. And again, your PIO may be a separate organization inside of your team, or it might actually be a person who's chartered with this, okay? So uh, all contacts work. So we're going to do a deep dive into that next week. Um, just want to uh, see if we've got any questions that have come across. I know we're getting close to the end of our time here. Uh, looks like we don't have any questions. 
And I can take a quick look here. If we want to go ahead and just open it up to see if we've got any questions online. Um, let's see, I see we've got Don, we've got Catherine. Uh, do either of you have any questions at all that you'd like to share? Okay, all right, sounds like we're good for now. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. Next week, what we're going to focus in on, we'll do the deep dive around governance. And also I'd like some tips and tricks and tools and talk a little bit about definitions and some of the, that mystery language that exists inside of the process improvement environment and the continuous improvement culture. So we'll do a deep dive on all of those things and the power of it. Um, obviously, there's its own vocabulary, governance structures as well. I want to make sure that we're really good and clear and flat on that. Um, also, recognizing how important those elements are for creating a highly engaged and highly empowered organization. Uh, so that's where we're going to focus on next week as well. And of course, if you've got any questions in the meantime, uh, just email me. Uh, you can email me directly at diana at pendolinogroup.com or write at info at pendolinogroup.com as well. Um, I'll, they'll pass those right on to me as well. And then feel free to call also. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to our next session next week. Have a wonderful one. Take care, everyone.